Hey, okay, I'll get started. Hey, there's three guys picking, right? Oh, sorry. Right, yeah, same thing. When you do that, when you do the point, then that's when I'll. It's, I'll... Already, it's already rolling. Oh, okay. You've ready. been rolling. Well, Wait, we're on. Hey, man. Oh, no, fucking talking. hell! Jeez, where do you get this freaking help that we have, man? Hey, if you were pay top dollar, I would have brought my brain. You know. Hey, we're gonna buy you a cheeseburger. <laughs> Any more, nice too. any more out of you, and you're going to be demoted Curly to on-air talents, all right? Uh -huh. You're going to be in front of the camera. That's I'm right. Sorry. Jeez. Like, humblest apology. All right. What's wrong with people? Oh, okay. Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is another exciting episode of Three Guys Picking, the most electrifying local cable access show in Chicago. And also the world. We are coming to you live from uh, downtown Chicago. This is our apartments. Uh, we've done some remodeling. It kind of looks like Wrigley Field a little bit. But, a little bit. You know, but, you love know, computer graphics. We have a lot of people come over, too, so we feel the need to make them comfortable when, when they're in our humble abode, you know. So we give them all chairs with backs. And numbers. And a big blue screen. The big blue screen. I'm your host, Tyler. With me always here is uh, Brody. And uh, who, who do we got today? We got, uh, is this it's another extra. Ernie? This is uh, the S still. President of the Enron fan club? Yeah. Emil. Emil? Emil. 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 Em Edgar? Em Emil. This is our new extra, Edgar. Welcome, buddy. Eric. Extra, the Edgar. Eric. Edgar, yeah. the extra. So. I'm dyslexic. What you are? Talk down to me? You do. <laughs> <laughs> we anyway, to to. Uh, we got a good show for you here today. Um, before we start, I'd like to give a shout out to a bad actor. He is in Brussels right now. Hey, how's it going, bad actor? Here in downtown Brussels. Doing well. Back to you, Jay. Ooh. So, and, Mac, where do you get those guys? That's okay. That's okay. Next time. Yeah, that really justifies the expense accounts. Jackass. And uh, can't believe him. So you can hit me. Oh, I'm gonna kill you, dude. And we got some movies to so, do. Behave. We're talking about some movies today. A lot of movies have been coming out from Hollywood lately that have been, Elephant quite man. frankly, bad. Really bad. And which is hard to do lately. Yeah. There's a lot of bad movies out there. So three guys picking. We feel that you know our course of action is to see these movies suffer through them so you don't have to. That means it's your turn to go. I looked at you. Oh, the cue card guy was slow. Damn it. All right, well today we will be reviewing two movies, Rollerball and the uh, Mothman Prophecies, Mothman? Mothman. Mothman. Mothman Prophecies. Is it Mothman or Mothman? Is he Moth Jewish or a superhero? It's one guy. He doesn't have a cape. Huh. Well, we've decided to combine these two reviews today, and they will, for now and forever, ever, be known as... Here on Three Guys Pick and Roll the Crap and the Crap Man Prophecies. Based on true events. 
This is true. I, I like the Roller Crapman prophecies. Roller nice Crapman prophecies. Either way, both these movies are horrible. First of all, I went to go see Crapman prophecies. Based on true events. Who gave him a speaking part? I don't know, man. Does that E stand for idiot? In Spanish, it starts with an E. Oh. Espanol. Yes. See? So I'm sitting there in the theater, and I actually had the, the, the pleasure of seeing Crime and Prophecies. Based on true events. In a movie theater called the Keith Albee, which is in Huntington, West Virginia. They do have movie theaters there. Now, Crime and Prophecies. Based on true events. That took place in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, is just up the street from Huntington. So you have this local flavor, local flavor. Everyone's going in because they want to see this movie that was filmed uh, about stuff that happened in West Virginia. So, movie starts, lights go down, the place is full, right? All of a sudden, this placard comes on the screen. This movie is based upon true events that took place in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. As soon as that came on, the whole place, yeah, woohoo, started clapping and cheering, and I'm thinking, this is a movie, Crackman Prophecies. Based on true events. Where 46 people died in real life. And they're all happy about it. They're all cheering, yay. Hey, it took place in West Virginia. It's kind of like that Chicago connection, you know? Whenever something happens in the world, it takes what? place in Chicago. Like, What the fuck is with the Chicago connection? Remember when OJ happened? You could almost see the newscasters, Channel 2, 5, and 7 here. They're almost trying to keep themselves from smiling because OJ went to Chicago to drop off the knife and bloody glove. Or the, the true events. The other bloody glove. And they're like, OJ, we're part of a national story. OJ came here and deposited the knife. I mean, granted, nothing really happens in West Virginia except for the occasional uh, stealing of a sheep here and there because that happens a lot. But uh, so I can see their excitement when a movie uh, like The Crap Man Prophecy is based on true events. That took place <laughs> in West Virginia. <laughs> I had it going, quit laughing. So I'm sitting there, they're all cheering about this. About 20 minutes in the movie, I realized I just came to a theater to see a freaking Richard Gere movie. Now, what the hell's all that? What? I mean, this is the guy that joined the ranks of Rosie O'Donnell as no talented hack piece of crap celebrity that never does anything good. And all they do is spot off about some country Dalai Lama person that they love or is that don't. the guy in Mouse Hunt by Woody Allen? Yeah. Wasn't it? Based on true events. Based on true events. So, what about that intersection with Sharon Stone? How does she keep getting movies? I don't know. But anyway, is there anyone there. left she hasn't slept with to get scripts? It's actually, she did get one of my scripts, yeah. But anyway, I'm sitting there. Now, 30 minutes into the movie, I realize there's a rock stuck in the bottom of my sketchers. Every time I move my foot, it scrapes against the floor. And this is really pissing me off. But it's a dark movie. It's the Crap Man Prophecies. Based on truth. And it's in West Virginia, so I don't want to make too much noise so people can pay attention to watching 46 of their people die. So I'm reaching down, trying to get the rock out of my shoe. I mean, that was more interesting to me than the movie, trying to get the damn rock out of my shoe, which, of course, I couldn't get out until the lights came on and the credits were done. And you know, Jeez, what a waste of time that movie was. It's so typical of people from West Virginia. I mean, they're too poor to even get their own name. They gotta add someone else. They gotta just add on to someone else's name. Your state's poor, Kenny. Your state's poor. You know, it's like going to New York. Like, if there's they're the next movie that has that has New York and talks about if when they well, when they make a movie about the 9/11 er, 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 and the World Trade Center bombings, that'd be like all the New Yorkers cheering because hey, it's about New York. I mean, that's just idiotic. Now tell me, tell me about this logo. Is that, that's a football, right? It is a football. Or is that, was that a guy with big lips and braces? It's, uh, it's just football. Football. It's football. Uh, the, you guys cam- talk about football on the show? Camera boy over here is a big football fan. Oh. He oh. even played high school football. Wow. Made for him. Wow, high school football. <laughs> That's you're pretty big into the football, Jason, aren't you? Uh, I do. Uh, yeah, I love the football. You were kind of chatting it's, about the it's, Bears it's, last it's, night. You know, it's unfortunate, though, to live in Chicago and have to deal with the Bears. I mean, you know, the glory days were a long time ago. Long time ago. I mean, Plus, going back 15, 16 years to the glory days. Now we got to go into a spaceship every time we want to see a, a field. Have you seen Soldier Field since yeah. you've been here? No, well, I, I mean, I, I went to it before, but I, I know they refurbished it. Is it? Yeah. No, it's not. It's no. not. It's no good. Bad. No? Real bad. Put a lid on it? No. Uh, they should. They should they put should a lid on. Bury the whole thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's basically like they took a big milk saucer and set it inside all the pillars and the arches. Hey, it's right. the Bears. So you kind of just kind of got a new stadium. Looks like it's kind of fucking the old stadium. Pretty Sorry, much. can I say that on TV? Yeah. Right. You'll beep that out, right? Yeah.
No. Because <laughs> we'll no, we'll just editing. leave it. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of editing, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the editing in your movie. Now, a lot of people don't know, uh, Jason obviously is Canadian. Fellow Canadian, William Shatner, back during the days of Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, you know, when they're doing lines, he'd be like, Spock, we have to save the Earth yeah. from the Klingons. Yeah. A. Yes. And then they'd have to edit the A's out. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Didn't really know that. Really? Mark, Mark did you have trouble with, with Jason and his A's? I don't A's think there was, the there was <laughs> not an A. No. 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 And he doesn't say a boat. <laughs> no, none of it. No, I, I tend to... Uh, I tend to, uh, I, I, I tend to, I see, I see to drop that that part of my accent, but uh, but but with, you know, with regards to the William Shatner thing, I mean, you know, Bill, you know, and I call him Bill because we're you know both Canadian. Bill uh, is a is a is a Shakespearean actor. So so are you telling me that, you know, when he was doing Romeo and Juliet uh, as a child, he was he was you know. He was, uh, you know, what what light uh, th through dot uh, you yonder, know, yonder window. window break, eh? Would, did he do that? That would be my assumption. What light, eh? Yeah. Through the yonder window breaks, eh? Oh, tis, ah. the, tis the sun, eh? Or maybe it's Juliet, eh? Oh, yeah. Right? Is that what you're saying? How easy is that, is comes your, back. Is you know, that your story and you're sticking to it? I may stick to that somewhat. Oh, However, crap. I think he knew that he was on the stage, so he had to get that out. Oh. You know on Star Trek, the, the, right, one, right. the wonder of editing, uh -huh. which is why our show is halfway well, decent. show is. Mm, yeah. It's halfway decent. Right, so right. Editing fixes right. a it's lot. More, it's more shoulder, less yeah. neck with the, with the Shatner. I got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, another thing about the movie um, that I enjoyed. Did you ever I, go on Priceline.com? I've not done okay. that. Okay. His, his commercials just yeah. didn't do it for me. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. You don't yeah. like Bill, do you? I, uh, no, I love I love, love, I love William love. Shatner. I can't call him Bill yet. Okay. I'm not Canadian. Well, you know, we're south of the 49th here. You know. <laughs> I like it when he sings. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> Mr. Tambourine Man. Yeah. Come back. Yeah. Uh, one thing I did enjoy about the film as well. Um, it seemed like there was almost a soap opera quality to it, like with the music in the background, yeah. a lot of close-ups of the face when, when people would say a line and then cut yeah. to another face. Yeah. Is that something that, that you want to get across? It just all comes from a, a tradition of kind of women's melodramas that it's sort of based in and that we try to have a lot of fun with that in it, so, yeah. It was all very Valley of the Dolls, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Which is great. <laughs> Right on. Now I want to talk a little bit wait, about... Wait, wait, wait. Who's the third guy? <laughs> so if you plan to go see a movie and you go up to this theater and you're like, hmm, yeah, I want to go see We Were Soldiers. That'd be cool to see uh, any, uh, whatever her name was, look like she had surgery and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what's her name again? The chick from Last Mohicans. chick from Last Mohicans. So you go to when see We Were Soldiers. You look up on the marquee and you Not see the Mothman snow. Prophecies is also playing. Run. Event. Turn around and run far away because if you see any movie that's in the same theater that Mothman Prophecies is playing, it'll taint Based your viewing of said events. movie. Just run. It'll be horrible. And you won't be able to get a good view of the movie you're seeing because Crabman Prophecies Based is right events. next door and in the same theater. Just run as far as you can. Run away. Run. And from here and forever now, Madeline Stowe will now be known as Madeline Stop Getting Plastic Surgery. Did you see this chick? She was not not bad. She was kind of an attractive Stay alive woman, no matter what occurs. I will find you. And 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 we were soldiers with uh, Mel Gibson. She uh she got her got a brand new face. I mean you, you would have thought she was a Jackson. Ooh. And she's supposed to play a 60s housewife and she's just like awful. Delator. Awful. Took oh, away yeah. from the movie. And and also don't see roller crap. I mean, the first movie was bad enough. James Caan took place in the 70s. And now this, who do we got this, uh, who's that punk that was in We Were Soldiers also? Chris, Chris Klein. Klein. Chris Klein is the next Keanu Reeves in training, you know? Hey, Chris Klein, they're going to catch you. They're going to kill you. They got to catch me first. They got to catch me, dude. Whoa. I love you, Sarah. I'm Neo. I mean, come on. Just don't oh, see roller Matrix. traps. Don't see moth crap prophecies. Good. Crapman prophecies, Movie. whatever the hell we're calling it. Don't see them. Run away. Run far away. Spend your time watching a good quality movie like, well, The Secret of Nim. You know? What? Based on true events. We sure. gotta get him another line. So, thanks for joining us here on Three Guys Picking today. As always, I'm Brody. 
That's Jackass. This is our extra. It's Mr. Jackass to you. What's up? What? Watch the hair. A spindle down the hair. Would you watch the hair? Welcome to my part of the show where you get to talk about cool places that I've been, uh, courtesy of Three Eyes Picking, and I got pictures to prove them. So today we're gonna get a, a really neat tour of a place that a lot of us know about because we've seen Superman 2, which was the best of the Superman movies. Um, we're a little visit to Niagara Falls. It's gonna be kind of cool. So come on in. You know, don't mind the mess. Um, the maid's off this millennium. Um, but be careful this couch, don't touch this couch, that's my mom's couch. So we'll just come over here. And, uh, sorry about that. Just get down there. Well, here we go. Um, first shot here is of a lot of people at Niagara Falls. And they're looking at it, in the background is that Space Needle thing that the Canadians seem to be so proud of. What's really neat is that in this crowd, I actually talked to a few of the people, like this dude, and the dude there in the red back there, and the one way back here, this, this, this lady with the gray coat, they actually all were extras in Superman too. So it's really neat to like find them there. Apparently they just kinda hang out there all the time because you know in Toronto there's not a lot to do, so they're like standing there going, I was in Superman too, I was in Superman too. You know, so they can talk to people. So it was pretty neat to be able to talk to them. You know, because like General Zod was in that movie. He was really cool. Um, this next shot is of like the back part of Niagara Falls. And like this is America. And that's Canada over there. So this is the good part. Um, and that's Canada, you know. It's pretty neat. This is a nice shot that that I was able to take. Um, I wanted to, you know, get a little bit of the foreground in there with the twigs all barren, and just to show a nice, you know, horizon shot of the the blue sky um, blending in with the with the white that's under it. I think that's a really neat shot, and artistically, I think, um, you know, it's a great photograph that a lot of people wouldn't, you know, be able to take. So I like that a lot. And. Here is another shot of Niagara Falls. Here's all the mist and stuff. And if you know, if you remember in Superman 2, some stupid kid was like hanging on the railing, and going, woo, woo, and like, you know, playing. And his mom told him not to do it, and he kept doing it. And then he fell in, and Clark had to go change into Superman and go save the kid. All the while hiding from Lois that he was Superman because Lois was starting to figure it out. Um, and this kid almost fell over too. But um, her mom like smacked her in the head. She's like, "Get the hell over here, eh?" Because um, we are on the Canadian side. This is really cool though too. That this rainbow appeared, and it was almost like the rainbow knew three guys picking was coming. Because as when we got there, it was just a bland, blah day, and then all of a sudden we stepped there, and then it just seriously, it just went like all the way down. Like somebody, like like God was drawing it for us. It just went chink, just like that. It was really neat. Kind of like you know when a tornado goes up, it goes up in the sky. This came out of the sky. It was really neat being able to get that picture. Um, you know, just like at Niagara Falls, you know, the colors and the sun shines brightly on three guys picking. Um, you know, as people here in Chicago know, because Chicago is our home and we love it. And um, it's the best city in the world, it really is. And three guys picking is the best show in Chicago. So we hope that you enjoyed this portion of uh, my pictures of cool places that I've been from movies or music or sporting events and I got the pictures to prove them. I enjoyed sharing them with you. Hope you got a little uh, smile and a little 
you know, tingle in your heart thinking back to when Superman 2 came out and you're like, dude, that's cool, Superman 2 rocks, Superman's cool. Um, but then they went ahead and trashed the whole franchise of Superman 3 and 4, respectively. Um, but, you know, that's the way it goes, that's the way Hollywood is. <sighs> Just wait for three guys picking part 2, um, The Return to Neverland, you're gonna love that one. Um, but anyway, we'll see you next time on my pictures. Um, but until then, bye. Was my hair okay on this one, or...? <clears throat> come on, James, before I... Come on, Lars! <laughs> before I burn my arm off! <laughs> Wait, I'm James. You're James, I'm Lars. That's right, everybody out there. I'm Lars Ulrich with my buddy James Hetfield. James. We've taken over three guys picking here for a little bit because, well, we're Lars and James. This is the Lars and James show. What do you want to talk about tonight, James? Anything special on your mind, per yeah, se? Let's talk something special. <laughs> well, that's right. Special things are special. And that includes being Metallica because we are the purveyors of all that's great in heavy metal history. I mean, I'm Lars Ulrich. I mean, I had a song on a compilation album of the best bands in California. Compilation! I, <laughs> I couldn't even play the drums at the time. I mean, then I had to go out and get a band and learn how to play. And I'm just so great that it worked. You know, Lars, you are great. And that reminds me. <laughs> trying to find my notes here, but I don't see them. I think Jason Newstead took them with him when he left the band. Jason Newstead, what a tool. <laughs> I mean, here's a guy. We just pulled him off the street. He was a regular fan. He was just one of, like, you people out there. Just a regular guy coming to the shows and listening to the songs. And all of a sudden, he's... He's in the band. We gave him such a great opportunity, and then he just leaves. I mean, I'm Lars. You're James. We made Metallica. We made all music that ever started or ended in the 80s and 90s. Heavy metal owes its birth to us. To us! <laughs> That's right, James. They owe it to us. So when little Jason ran off, that was just kind of like... Well, it was a big slap in the face to us because we've done so much for him and for all the people. That's right, it could be you. <laughs> it could be you. We need another bassist, so if you're out there and you play bass guitar, you want to be a part of Metallica, I mean, if you can keep up with my drumming. That's right. I, I pioneered the double bass with the feet and then using the arms, too, because I'm Lars. You know, we're just three guys, three fans that got lucky and turned into assholes, and it could be you. <laughs> Actually, James, James, we were assholes beforehand. We just kept it up. Just no one knew it because we were tools. <laughs> That's right. Speaking of tools, I had a great tool back when I was a kid in Denmark. I was a tennis player, and I was one of the top ten junior tennis players in the country. I moved to California. I'm not even the top ten on my block. <laughs> His <I> mean, block. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just, it's, well, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> That's right. That was your line, James. I'm sorry. I should have held it together for you a little better because, well, I held Metallica together for 20 years. I mean, I started everything. And there's that one guy that came in the band. But tell that story about Dave Mustaine. Dave Mustaine! <laughs> That's right. That's such a great story. I love the way you tell it, too. I mean... Tell that... I'm, I'm laughing. Let me tell that story again. <laughs> Dave Mustaine! Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I, I just love the way that James tells the Dave Mustaine story because the way he starts and ends it is like no one else. And that's why I have to laugh every time he... He tells it. He is James. So what about that one part of the Dave Mustaine story that you don't always tell people? 
Kurt Hammett is not gay. <laughs> That's right, he's not, because why would we kick out Dave Mustaine? I mean, we went to New York and he was just being a jerk, drinking and doing drugs, because we don't do that. And then, you know, we woke him up in the morning at 8 a.m. and said, hey, here's a bus ticket back to California, see you later. I mean, that was so cool, we're so cool. Is that Dave Mustaine? <laughs> You know, I don't think that was Dave Mustaine. That kind of looked more like Kurt Loder. Kurt Loder's a tool. <laughs> now, we made MTV. Thanks for joining us here on the Lars and James show. I'm Lars Ulrich, and this is James Hetfield. Napster sucks. <laughs> Napster is evil. <laughs>